not, not at, at all, all, to be honest. Yeah. Um, for for one, one, I knew I had not done anything that they were alleging. Um, so I was comfortable that the inquiry would eventually uh, vindicate my position. Uh, and secondly, I was really uh, thrilled by the support I received from the board. Uh, it was a simple, straightforward question that they asked me, uh, had I done it? And the answer was pretty obvious, I had not done it. Uh, and once they accepted and they believed me immediately, uh, I was very, very encouraged uh, and, and satisfied by the support that they gave me. So I felt quite confident that in the end I would be vindicated. Arun, let's go to a man that you know very fam familiar with, David Becker. In his interview with Neil Manthorpe, he spoke of a test fund uh, and South Africa obviously being omitted from it. Uh, do you feel comfortable by this decision by the so-called Big Three to omit South Africa, who has played such a key role in, in test cricket so far? We were never satisfied by being omitted from, from that test fund or in fact from either the Big Three or, or the test fund. So we weren't satisfied with that position. And it's why we rejected the initial proposals. And perhaps what many don't realize is that those original proposals were substantially revised to a point where we were satisfied that we could get uh, into, or we could enter uh, into that uh, revamp proposal uh, and, and agree with it. So, uh, is it, uh, so you say South Africa are back in the test fund? Yes, absolutely. Yes. One of the changes that were made uh, that led to us agreeing to, to the proposals was the fact that Cricket South Africa was, uh, was part of the test fund. Let's go to David Becker again. Do you harbour any ill feelings towards him after those statements? And in the future, can you see yourself working with him again if the opportunity presents itself? I don't harbour any ill feelings against David. He made an honest statement. Uh, he felt it was right in his mind uh, to say what he said. Uh, he thought he was contributing to the process. Um, I think it was ill-advised or the timing was completely inappropriate. Uh, so I don't harbour any ill feelings against David. He did it with good intent. Um, working with him in the future, only time will tell. I think he's a good lawyer. Uh, I've worked extremely well with him uh, at the ICC uh, and certainly in the, little in, in the in interim that he was involved in Cricket South Africa. He's got a lot to offer. Um, and let's hope that something works out in the future, both for him and for Cricket South Africa. Let's go to, obviously, the 8th of February, when obviously the ICC uh, passed that proposal to give uh, India, England and obviously Australia the, the powers. Do you believe it was the best, the best decision that CSA backed it? I remember when obviously Chris Nanzani came out and backed the decision. Do you, do you believe that Nanzani and obviously CSA itself uh, this was the wise decision from their part to back the big three? It was a practical route to follow. I think um, Chris Nzani said nothing is perfect. So if that was the ideal scenario and this was the original proposals that were put in the, on the table, we were able to amend it to a point where we were close to what we would have found as perfect. Uh, but the world's not a perfect place. Yes, of course. So we got to a position where we thought it was acceptable uh, and we felt rather than being on the outside, we might as well get involved now and try and narrow that gap uh, so that we can get to a perfect position. So would you say that the uh, Pakistani president Zaka Ashraf's comments were maybe out of proportion when he said that he felt cheated by, by the CSA? I think it was maybe an emotive reaction. Yes. Uh, we had sat down the night before the ICC board meeting uh, with both Sri Lanka and Pakistan because there was this perception that the three of us were together. We were all deciding for ourselves uh, what was in the best interest of both world cricket as well as for the member country itself. But we thought it was right to sit down with them because we didn't want to surprise them the next morning uh, when we felt that it, there was a very, very good chance uh, that Chris Nanzani would go along with the proposals. So we sat down with them uh, in the foyer of that hotel in Singapore and we explained to them that we were mandated, or rather Chris Nanzani was mandated by Cricket South Africa, that if it had got to a position where he was comfortable and that some of those changes that we were looking for had been made, then in all likelihood we would support the proposal. Uh, let's obviously go to uh, those three nations. Obviously we know that cricket is the game, of the, uh, game for the world. Do you trust the big three to make decisions that will not only favour the big eight nations, so we can say, but also the lesser nations? Well, let's put it this way. Um, all of the proposals in the future that come out of the big three yes. will have to come to the full board for approval. Yes. And that was the fundamental that we wanted. So in other words, the exco that has been formed or the finance committee, 
are committees that will do a lot of detailed work. Of course, they will be influential, but any proposals that they make will have to be accepted by the full board. And the full board encompasses all 10 full member nations, yes. plus three representatives of the associate and affiliate countries. So in effect, it's still the board of ICC, just like in the past, yes. that will have the power to make decisions. So which means that uh, the, the big three don't have exactly full power. Well, they do have full power, but which means they, but at the end of the day, they still have to consult the, like you say, the other seven nations. They, they will have to get yes. approval by the full board. And you know, like in any organization, yes. if a board is competent, qualified, able to demonstrate uh, the kind of authority that it ought to, then it should function effectively. Arun, let's go to a man that you're familiar with, Mr. Srinivasan. If he had to offer some sort of peace treaty, would you accept it and build new relations with India for the future? Or do you still feel a sense of violation because of the past at your current post and obviously with the ICC? I said it at the beginning when I got appointed into yes. the ICC, the organization is much bigger than me. Yes. And equally the BCCI is bigger than Mr. Srinivasan. Yes. World Cricket is bigger than all of us. All of us. I agree. Definitely. So whatever it takes um, or whatever is needed to make sure that both organizations enjoy a very healthy relationship would interest me in making amends, uh, making peace. Uh, if I need to apologize for a wrong that I had done, I'm very happy to apologize. I think the game is bigger than any one of us. Um, and if Mr. Sunavasan was to extend the hand of friendship, I would be the first to enter the door. I don't, staying obviously with the BCCI, but on a different uh, topic, the IPL. Would you, there was something obviously that uh, South Africa hosted back in 2009. Uh, do you think that the, uh, they made the, I would say, a more sensible decision, as you said, to move it across the seas into the UAE? Or is there a sense of regret? Not at all. I think um, we have to accept that the IPL belongs to the BCCI. Yeah. It's a domestic league of theirs, albeit on a very big scale. Uh, it would have been a real privilege for us to have hosted it in South Africa. We would have embraced it. We would have really looked after them like any visitor to the country. But in their wisdom, they decided that the most sensible option, and I might say I tend to agree with it, yes. that the most sensible option for them is to have it across in the UAE. It's a small part of the tournament. Um, from my understanding, it is 16 matches. Uh, their home ministry has allowed them to play back in India from the 1st of May. So the bulk of the tournament will be in India. Uh, and it makes perfect sense. So. I don't think we have to be, we might be disappointed, you know, we would have yes, loved to have hosted course, it. Definitely. But it's not our right. Um, it would have been a privilege and we would have laid out the carpet to look after them, but it was not to be. I don't know, obviously if we look at that IPL, I mean, we looked in 2009, commercially it was such a massive success. Anytime in the future, if, you know, Mrs. Srinivasan and you mend those relationships of having it in the future, it doesn't have to be obviously the year of Indian elections even prior to that or after that, would you consider something like that? Well, let me just make one small yeah. correction. There's yeah. no broken relationship between yes. Cricket yes. South okay. Africa and okay. the BCCI. Yes. There's a very healthy communication line okay. that goes and I apologize. on. Yes. Yeah, you know, yes. often yeah. I think people yes. uh, make out that we don't speak to one another yes. uh, and so on. Yes. So, and then to turn to the future, if ever there's an opportunity for any yes. country for that matter, uh, you know, we are all cricket-loving people, uh, we're global citizens, yes. we share our resources, we share our expertise. Yes. And if something were to happen for any reason in any country and South Africa needs to play host, our doors will be open. Yes. Uh, Arun, I'm going to shift now to our shores, uh, transformation. In the 20 years that we've obviously become a democracy, how would you sum up transformation in terms of cricket and how it's affected our game locally? Well, perhaps the best uh, reference point would be the Minister of Sport, uh, his own satisfaction at the progress that we've made. And, and I take comfort in that. I don't think we've done as well as we could have. Uh, there's always room for improvement. But I think the Minister has on more than one occasion acknowledged the progress that we've made. From where we came from to where we currently are, uh, it, there's, there's, there's something to, to celebrate about. If you look at the current under-19 team that has just won the yes. World Cup, it's a very representative team. Um, the Minister acknowledged that yes. when he said that is a team that is very representative. And that gives me comfort that we've made some progress, that we've made very good progress. But I think there's more that we can achieve. Yes. Uh, so back in August last year, we had a transformation in Darba. We analysed where we had got to. 
Uh, we sort of set new goals where we want to get to, and we're in the process now of implementing uh, those goals. I don't, I'm going to move uh, back to obviously uh, the future to our programs. There have been talks of a four test series against Australia and possibly a five test against England. Another question I want to throw back to you, back in the 90s, and I'm sure you were familiar with it, with it we had triangular series and quadrangular series. How close are CSA to making at least one of those happen? Um, triangular, in fact, we've spoken to with some of our uh, member countries across uh, in, in the ICC, so that is a reality. Um, I must hasten to add that they're not very popular. And simply because when the home team is playing, there's yes. a lot of support. Supporters, of course, yes. Right? But when the two visiting teams are competing, it's very difficult to fill a stadium. Yes. But notwithstanding, we are exploring that. The second challenge is, this, is the cluttering of the calendar. To find space in the calendar where two other countries are available is not so easy. Yes. Uh, you know, and there's always demands on space in the calendar. So it's very difficult to get triangulars successfully together. But we're not close to the idea. We are exploring uh, those possibilities. Um, your question on the four test series, uh, it's, it's real. Uh, we've had um, very, very constructive discussions with Australia in particular. Uh, we've agreed in principle that we will do it. Uh, in fact, it, I think it was yesterday I received a confirmation email from my counterpart in Australia, yes. James Sutherland, yes. where he's agreed and his board has approved some of the principles we've been talking about. So now it's for our logistical people to go and work out the detail. Do, uh, where will this be hosted? Uh, well, uh, both, countries. both countries. So countries. we will play oh, uh, across in Australia yes. and they will come, come back. back to South Africa mm. uh, on the reciprocal principle where, where we will host four test series in each country. Okay. I don't, I'm going to go to our national uh, team. We're obviously in the current transition phase at the moment. How much of time will be given to Russell Domingo? Or is it a case of he needs the time for himself to get this team uh, you know, you know, winning series again, because we are obviously the world's number one test side. There's that added pressure of you know winning every series and obviously being at the peak of your powers. Well, if you look at it, and including this current uh, Australian tour that just ended, yes. um, Russell hasn't done a bad job. Yes, and and nor has that playing eleven or the or the squad of fifteen. They've done a fantastic job. Um, it's going to be testing this year because we go to Sri Lanka. Yes. Uh, that's not an easy place to tour and win. Uh, we've got, and we're leading up to the World Cup. So if you're talking Russell in particular, we're fully behind him. Um, I've had several conversations with him. Uh, I think he's a sensible person. Uh, he's level-headed. He works very hard. Uh, he's got the respect of the players. So we will support him. His contract goes through to the World Cup. Um, I don't want to make any predictions. Let's see how the balance of this year goes. Uh, and I will engage with him about extending it for him, if he so wishes to. Uh, if we, we, we need to see how the performances go. As long as the respect is there between him and the players, there's no reason for us not to extend his contract. I don't, uh, obviously with the current T20 World Cup, uh, obviously when we start against Sri Lanka, what are the expectations? Because I think there's a sense that the public finally want that elusive ICC trophy on a senior level. We saw the under-19s doing that. How close are we? Do you believe that this current team can do it? I think there's a, there's a number of reasons why the wheel has to turn, yes. you know, and at some stage that little bit of luck that we need uh, must fall our way. Having said that, you can't win global events unless you perform in the big moments. There comes that one over in a competition, there comes that one batsman who needs to stand up in the day uh, that has to perform. Uh, and unless that is done, we won't come back with a trophy. So I'm confident that we've got a good team. Uh, I think it's helpful that the expectations have been lowered, you know, that we know we're in a building phase, uh, that we've got talent, but we haven't got a high expectation from the public that, you know what, we'll just go there and walk over everybody. Uh, the other teams in the competition we have to respect. There's some fantastic cricketers in the world today. So we're going to, be, have to be, we're going to have to be at the best of our game if we want to come back successful. So